Hey guys, just to let you know that Borderlands and The Last Ones are on Tubi right now. That's Tubi. It's a streaming service. You probably have it on your PlayStation or on your phone. Um, check it out. The Last Ones is a zombie drama. It's in black and white. The first black and white zombie movie, I think it is. I'm not going to check though or, you know. And also Borderland is a exploitation film about the cartels. And it's a lot of fun. And if you're like, hey... I want to learn about how El Paso is. Well, don't watch my film because it's not like how it is at all. But if you want to watch a fun movie set <laughs> in El Paso, check it out. It's a lot of fun. Borderland and The Last Ones on Tubi. Check them out now. And now, let's start with the show. Hello, guys. Welcome to The Bomb Squad. I know what you're thinking. Hey, last week we didn't have an episode. This week, are we going to have a real episode? The answer is no. And you should be ashamed of yourself. For even suggesting that these episodes aren't real. Um, and also we're going to review Arena for another fake episode. It's a <laughs> it's a month of no views. That I wasn't to... supposed to be a fake episode, <laughs> but Arena turned out to be a fake movie. So that's just I'm gonna, what happens. I'm going to try to hit uh, all of this month with getting z- absolutely zero views on the YouTube page <laughs> and zero views on the Zencast. Um, no, guys. So this week, I don't know. Last week you saw my interview when I was in the san diego film festival and this week we're gonna do something a little bit commercially because as you know i am a filmmaker as you know when you skip over my titles on tubi i make movies and as someone who makes movies sometimes i'm gonna talk about those movies especially when i need more subscribers start getting paid for those movies So we've already talked about my feature films, The Last Ones in Borderland. We can't talk about The Empty Space yet because it hasn't been released. But we're going to talk about something else. We're going to talk about the short films that I've been doing all day and all night. Um, So yeah, if you guys don't know, I also have my filmmaker page and it has all of my short films um you can see it also has all the trailers for my feature films if you want to see those um or you could just like go to tubi or go to whatever the distribution company i do bayview entertainment <laughs> i'm so good at this i'm such a good director <laughs> um so you can go see those you can just see some kind of funny stuff the actual the brainchild of this channel um was created on that site. It's still there because I don't want to lose the views, but it's uh, the three... What was it, Josh? The five craziest Godzilla movies that never got made? Oh, yeah, the, the all the Godzillas that didn't happen. Yeah, yeah, it's a funny video about like Godzilla movies that almost got made and how far they got in development. Yeah, it's a good and, one. I learned it's, things. Yeah, yeah. It was, it's interesting. Um, and that's how I started with the deep dives. I just wanted to kind of explore some music, movie history that no one cares about but me. And so you can see that kind of stuff. I was like playing with trailers for a while. Like, remember I did that trailer where I just, I used all the the sound from the Joker trailer and then I just put in the Joker footage from 1966. (laughs) Yeah, it was funny. It was funny and it's the most I've ever thought about that Joker movie. Um, But on top of all that, we're also, I'm also doing these short films. We just released the, uh, nightmare on our millennials killing Freddy, which is obviously a parable, a parody of the Freddy and Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. And we've we did Helix, we did the Wellness Check. Uh, the Hound is on there, but that one's super old. I just put it on there because I saw you know, that actually. I was looking at it, so I was like, oh, the Hound and Sunjar are both and on there. Sunjar and even the Arrival. I think is on there. The body, yeah. the body, yeah. Um, take that, Dennis Villanueva. I almost named my short the name of your movie um so yeah so let's talk about it i mean the hound the body and what was the other one i said uh, oh, sun the, jar. the sun jar those were made in college i just put them up there because i i don't want i'm like i'm not like ashamed of any of my work but they're very clearly college works the hound is probably my favorite of them because it's the most stylized oh, the hound's also. great yeah it's so cheesy yeah. yeah it's so fun and it also has dion <laughs> I was going to say, Dion is in, yeah, he's, he's in, in a lot two of, of these, yeah. Well, he's in all the feature films, but he's he's in some of the shorts. Dion works a lot, so uh, we try, we try to use actor. him when we can, and he's a lot of fun to be around. Um, 
But yeah, so let's talk about these shorts. So I want to talk about the reason that I'm doing shorts now. Um, I think it's a, a lot of it has to do with the fact that uh, when we were doing the empty space, we shot the empty space, I think, like three years ago at this point. Mm -hmm. um, and we put it into festivals and it was something I was really proud of. And I'm still very proud of that movie. And before when we did Borderland and the last ones, um, when we would submit them to festivals, we would just get like, yeah, you're not getting in. <laughs> you're not in this. What are you like? What are you thinking? Emails. Um, and then when I would ask for like notes or like why they didn't put us in, I would I would get ghosted. Um, and it's all too common. Yeah, it's all too common. It's a lot of like, I mean, they're submitting like I think for even the El Paso Film Festival, he said he got like 10,000 features submitted and it's like they're only showing before corona they were only showing like maybe 10 and so to get into that 10 you have to have like be amazing and so the thing the thing that really annoyed me is with the empty space i guess it's not annoying i guess it, it's that double-edged sword with the empty space we kind of got this um like we got this double-edged sword where I was I was emailing the festivals we didn't get into, and they were saying, "Oh, you know, we love we loved it. Like we all thought it was great. I was getting like nine point fives and uh, like four stars on it, and a lot of the festivals were like actually writing back. I wasn't getting ghosted, but they all kept saying the same thing that in the midst of coronavirus." those 10 features film slots that they had had usually been resorted down to like two. And like, I know one festival I was up against that Aubrey Plaza movie, black bear. And it's like, who are you picking? If your choices are Aubrey Plaza yeah. movie or my movie, it's like, you're clearly going to pick you're, pro you're clearly going to go with the Plaza. So that was, I mean, it's disappointing because again, like I need my film to be seen by other people for it to work. But at the same time, it wasn't that disappointing because it's also nice to know that the movie's good, but it's just outside circumstances. But again, in reality, as good as that sounds that they like the movie, I mean, some festivals were even willing and they are willing to like advertise. It. And it's like, that's pretty cool. But at the same time, you know, it's a great advertisement putting me in your festival. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, like, I kind of I understood, but it was still very, very annoying that I couldn't get it in because, you know, we're trying to sell this. We're trying to get this out to the masses. So a lot of them were telling me, like, they just didn't have the time. And Josh knows this, but I've always been pretty stubborn against short films. Not because I hate short films or anything. I just I, I didn't see a point to them. Uh, because a yes. lot of people short films like they end up on Vimeo, you know. And guess who's watching videos on Vimeo? Nobody. <laughs> um, so like it was this thing where it's like, why am I make? Why am I going to put effort into this thing? And then it goes nowhere. And after the empty space, I realized a that it's a lot easier to get short films in the festivals because they have a lot more slots than ten, and b. YouTube exists. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and to me, it, it was kind of weird when Vimeo, it was kind of like YouTube was for like music videos and BS. And then Vimeo was, was like for short films, but then, you know, no one watched Vimeo, which is probably why it's collapsing now. But yeah. Yeah. And that's was, the thing. It's like, but I, there, I don't, this is good. This is silly, but I think the reason that people don't put their short films on, on, YouTube is that there's this weird fake like elitism that like filmmakers want to give themselves like this prestige, I guess would be a better word. Oh yeah. Like you can't just watch it on YouTube. Like, yeah. you know. like I'm not a content creator. I'm a filmmaker. Yeah. I'm not someone playing Sonic on a speed run. I'm, but, and yeah. here's the thing, like, yes, you should consider yourself a filmmaker, but here's the other thing. You know, what's more important than being taken seriously as a filmmaker having people see your work <laughs> right and like i never would get anywhere that i where i am now if i hadn't like just decided to put my films out on i think we put it on the very first time we put uh last ones we put it on fucking amazon when amazon was still letting you independently put your movies on there and 
like because of that and because of like the promotion I did, we were picked up by a distributor and we've just kind of been going up the ladder. And now we're your favorite to be classics. And so that's when I realized, like, yeah, I don't, I, I already have no shame. Like, I literally have to, like, find models and be like, hey, dude, do you want to be in a movie? Or, <laughs> you know, like, right. I have to reach out to random people and ask them if they want to be in movies constantly. And I, we constantly get rejected by the fucking actors and stuff. So there's no shame in my game. So I was like, you know what? Let me start putting this stuff out. And, you know, if I need a calling card, well, I'm going to get one and it's going to be uh, uh, YouTube. So that's that was the idea behind this whole thing. And I think after as I've started to do it, I'm kind of loving this format of, of short films because you can tell, and I know this is going to sound stupid to anyone who knows anything about film, but you can do any kind of story, you know? Like it can be like a you can be trying to say something with the themes or you can just have like a scary nonsense story or you can do a parody of Freddy Krueger. You can do whatever. And I think I'm really liking that format. And I yeah, eventually I will go back to features. That's always been the goal. But right now, let me have fun. Let me have let me live. Damn it. Yeah, it's kind of like it's like and plus, I mean, because the really it kind of started with well, wellness check, right, which is about wellness the pandemic. Check. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, when you're, you know, everything's locked down anyway, what else are you going to do? You know, so it's kind of like funny that it was like born of that. And like the best thing. OK, so let's start with Wellness Check. Wellness Check stars Catherine Rodden and Adam Bustle. And it was filmed during the pandemic. And so my main requirement was that I needed two people who were close to each other already because I didn't want to put anyone at unnecessary risk, especially like, oh, these are two strangers. Let me go meet you. And um, and let's talk about this or whatever. And I already knew Catherine Smith Rodden because uh, from Tumblr of all reasons, and she had auditioned mm-hmm. for The Empty Space, and she was very good. She was remember she's Tumblr. All, I know, crazy. right? She's <laughs> always been. She's she's a very good actress. She just didn't fit any of the roles in Empty Space, which is always disappointing. But I always knew that I wanted to work with her. Like it was in the bag. It was just finding the right project. And at the time. I was only doing features, so finding the right project is hard because it's like you have to bring her in from L.A., you got to do all this stuff. But because of this pandemic and having to work our way around it, I figured out, like, well, let's do this short, and they can stay in L.A., and they're going to record it on their phones. And it's like a found footage movie. That's what it is. It's like a, it's three phone calls between a girl and her boyfriend, and they become more unhinged as the calls happen. And yeah, it's like so, a horror short. It's interesting. Yes, they're almost always horror shorts. There's a couple that are coming out that aren't, but for the most part. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, it was like, because I wanted to do, like, it's always weird when you're calling someone. Because when, I don't know, Josh, when you're on the phone with someone, I never think about where they are, you know? Yeah. And when, but when you're FaceTiming with someone, you're always kind of like looking around to see where they are, you know? Yeah, you're always like, wait, what, what room are you in? You <laughs> yeah. know? Yeah. And so I wanted to play with that idea that you don't really know where anyone is when they call you on FaceTime or who they are. And so I found Catherine, Sp- all right, I, I reached out to Catherine Smart run and I asked her like, Hey, do you know anyone that you'd feel, feel comfortable filming this with? Cause there is one scene at the end where they do have to be in the same location. And, you know, she found uh, Adam and Adam was great. He was perfect. Not only, and you, if you listen to this podcast, you've seen Adam before because he did the, um, which movie did he pick? Oh yeah, the the Amy Fuller one, not no. Amy Fuller, uh, Smiley uh, Face with Amy. Anna Ferris. Ferris. Yeah. Anna Ferris, thank you. And so, um, we got to do that. Uh, but he like he's also he he has his own production company in LA where he's doing commercials. So he was literally the perfect person. He was like asking me questions that I didn't even know. He's like, "You wanted a four K or six K?" And I was like, "No, on your phone." <laughs> I want you to record it on their phone. So we rehearsed it like a bunch of times, but, at, you know, rehearsing it, I had complete faith in them. So I was just like, no, you guys record it, send it to me, and I'll edit it together. I gave them all the notes beforehand. They recorded it super professional, super great. Everyone stayed safe, and they were off to the running. And so once I finished that one, I was like, well, let me put it into festivals. And it got into like five of the six festivals I put it into. And that's another good thing. Like, 
with Empty Space, Empty Space was made, you know, like I said, three years ago. It won an award for Best Festival at Sacramento Film Festival last year, and we're still waiting to release it. Where with, uh, with like, Wellness Check, or I'll do Freddy because that one was the most recent. Freddy premiered on Sunday in San Diego, and then I posted it on Wednesday on YouTube. Because you're just eight, like I don't have to like worry about like am I gonna make money off of this? It's yeah, like, like distribution this. stuff. Yeah, exactly. It's like no, yeah. we're just like this was made for very cheap. It's just for fun, so let's just put it out for fun. And so that's one of my favorite things. You get that immediate reaction. And so after I, the success of Wellness Check, I was like, well, let's let's hit this off. And that's where I started talking to Kelsey. Kelsey was always, I mean, we we're always friends, but we had never kind of found the time to work together because she's more of a photographer, but I knew just by, from her eye that she could be a great director of photography. So we finally like figured out like the timing was perfect and we kind of like were able to work together. So we were also getting the vaccines at the time. (laughs) Yeah. And so I was just writing shorts and I just started sending them to her and we just like picked two and we actually picked the Helix one and the Freddie one. And so those are the ones we've filmed so far. And then we did, um, and then we started like, you know, like figuring out how to do it. And we put it together and we filmed it all on a weekend. It's the same actors, if you didn't notice. But it's Priscilla Rios who plays, uh, let's talk about Helix now. Priscilla Rios plays the woman. I don't really give them names. Like I was going to say, the they don't really, the names wouldn't come up. It's just a woman in an apartment, right? Yeah, I guess in both and- cases, yeah. And it's weird because, like, I always feel a little bit weird when I'm putting the credits and it just says woman, but it's like, why do they need <laughs> names? Um, but anyway, and then we got Dion, and Dion was like a last minute. Originally, I had someone else all lined up, but then they were like waiting until the FDA was giving approval to the vaccine. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so they ended up catching coronavirus. And by that time, we already had the tickets booked for Kelsey. Also, we have a very strict, you have to have a vaccine to be on my sets because it's not just me, it's everyone on set. So, you know, if you make a choice, you make a choice. So we had to get another actor, unfortunately. And so I, I like was like racking my brain and then I was like, you know, who'd be great for this is Dion. More, for, more so for Freddie than for, for Helix. But as soon as, as soon as I hit that, everything fell into place and we were able to film it. You know, we filmed it over a weekend. Helix is about... It's kind of like an evil Alexa movie. I don't know how much we want to give away because they're all yeah. It's kind of like just it's yeah. It's it's very interesting and it's not like that other evil Alexa movie that's not very good that I saw recently. <laughs> 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 Can't even think of the name. I don't have any idea. Kimmy. Jexy. Oh yeah, Jexy. Oh, where it's trying to sleep with him. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so it was just kind of like how weird it is that. Um, you know, you get a piece of technology and it already knows so much about your location and where you are and where it is. And so I wanted to play with that idea. And then we kind of did that. And it's like fun because we're able to play with stuff. Like, again, there's no real, there's a menace in Helix, but it's not, it, a, it's not like a physical thing. It kind of reminds me of like, um, it, it like you're watching, it's almost like someone's telling you like a ghost story and like yeah. a campfire kind of thing where it's like, you know, it's not super long, but you're just kind of like, oh, okay, and then what happens? You know, it's interesting. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, and that was a lot of fun. And another great thing is that, I mean, every once in a while, you get to, like, Valerie had never acted before, but we were able to, um, like, we were able to work together, and that was great. But a lot of times you want to, like, especially on these low budgets, you kind of want someone's experience just because it's a little easier. But on these shorts, it's a little better because you can get actors that, haven't acted before like priscilla rios who plays the actress she had never acted before we were friends in when we worked in journalism and she had always wanted to act so again I, we were able to give her the chance because to me as far as shorts are concerned if you mess up like who cares you know yeah sky's the limit yeah exactly like what it what you just end up wasting a couple days and you try to least and you can learn use that information to go to the next one so, like, yeah, might as well give people chances and get more diversity in our in our cast and shit. So, yeah, so Helix was good. And like I said, we put it, again, we put that one into, I think I put it into four festivals and it got into two. 
And at the time, I was like, okay, Helix just got into these two festivals. Let me put it in. And then I'll just release Freddy because I don't I don't know what the festival rules are for parodies. It's like depends on which one. And I wasn't about to like find out, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm it's kind of like it's very murky, but it's obviously like a parody. Although I think the good thing about Freddy is it's a parody that I could see happening in like Freddy's Dead, like one of the sillier Freddy films. Like I could see this yeah. scene taking place. Well, see, you know? And see, that's the thing about my parodies is that my parodies kind of come from like the Edgar Wright school of parodying or like uh, even like a lot of the National Lampoons where it's like Edgar Wright clearly loves the movies that he's parodying. So it's more of like a lampoon of the story than necessarily a parody of it. Like I'm not trying to make fun of freddy per se like in the in the short freddy's still freddy krueger it's just that he's also he's just dealing with something he usually doesn't deal with yeah and so it's like, true to the essence of of exactly Mr. Kruger. it's true to his, it so it's just kind of like a funny thing that could happen in the freddy krueger universe as opposed to like on like a fucking epic movie parody where it's like look at how stupid this is you know Right, right, yeah. There's, there's a clear respect for the source material. Yeah, and then, like, you got Dion, who loved being Freddy, and he was, like, jumping around the whole time. It was, like, <laughs> so great to have him on set. Um, and we filmed that one, and we and I was my idea was, like, okay, Helix is going to premiere at, these, at a few festivals. Let's let them, let's let it premiere, and then I'll also release Freddy to kind of, like, kickstart the fact and let people know that we're doing these parody, or these short films. But then someone reached out to me and was like, hey, I'm looking for comedy films made by Latinos. Do you know, do you have any? And I was like, well, I have one, but it's like a parody. And also it has nothing to do with being a Latino. And they were like, and I talked about this on the festival, like the weird feeling of like, should I put it in? Because it's, it's like a silly short film. But they were like, yeah, that's still a Latino story. And so we put it in and it got in right away. And so, but the thing was, it wasn't until March. <laughs> so we just had to wait. And so yeah. now, like, and again, we, we, it, they showed it, got to do that interview you guys heard last week. And now uh, it's out and you can go check it out right now. Follow the links at the bottom of the screen. The good thing right now is that we have a really good mix of different, um, different types of, of, of scary films. Like The Hound is obviously a serious throwback to the universal films with all the cheese intact. And um, also featuring Dion going wild. And also Dion's the devil. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, and then we have, we have Helix or we have wellness check, which is kind of like a disturbing short film. That's real quick. We have Helix with a sci-fi horror. That's a little bit, I would say that it takes, a, it's like, my goal was to try to do like a little bit of uh, Sam Raimi if he did a sci-fi horror film. And then you have this Freddy one, which is obviously just a parody of Freddy Krueger. But, you know, it's cool that we have such a diverse thing. And like me and like, I'm still working on little shorts that don't need Kelsey's amazing <laughs> talent. <laughs> Where I can just point the camera one time and, and be done with it. But so I'll have those, but also we're working, me and Kelsey are working on some really big ones and some really cool ones. And so it's just, I don't know, it's just kind of fun. And we're the, the goal would be to be able to like get enough attention to make a feature again that I don't have to pay for, that they pay us. That'd be nice. Yeah. <laughs> so it's always good when you start getting money for your effort. You know? Right. I always think, you know what? I don't know if this makes me like a free spirit, but I think that you should get paid for your work. <laughs> um so I yeah, find it I funny like um like I, I feel like that's reversed. Like if you remember back in the nineties, it's like you want to be paid by a company, what are you a sellout? And now it's like get it out there as much as you can because yeah. you know, someone needs to like see this, you know. Yeah, I think that that's like the most important thing is that you always want to uh you always want to be like you always want to put your work out there because that's the only way to get better, because like Honestly, your friends are going to tell you that they like it regardless. And it's very hard to like separate the art from the artist when it's like your best friend or your, you know, strangers on the internet. <laughs> They're not going to fuck around with you. <laughs> and so, you know, I mean, I know a lot of people take 
criticism to heart, but I always look at it like, this is how they're viewing the film. It might not be how I view it, but it's good information to have. Because even if I disagree with their with their take, at least I see like, okay, well, how did they get to the? How do they see this? So it's cool. It's cool to see other people, how they accept your work, what they like, what they don't like, if they find the humor funny. And so, you know, I'm always a proponent of like, get your work out there. Even if it's garbage, who cares? Like, there's like, I mean, you know how many garbage movies we like? Look at our podcast. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> wait for the arena. <laughs> wait for every sense. episode we've done. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> I think if you believe in your art and you love your art, someone else, you'll find the audience that you're looking for. But the only way you're not going to find that audience is if you put it in your pocket and leave it there. So, I, yeah, I just wanted to do this to talk a little bit about my directing page and our short film page. And also so that you guys can go like and subscribe those shorts. Um, and also so that you can kind of maybe get a little inspired. Maybe take that shit off Vimeo or at least take off the password and let people watch. Let people talk about it. Because even if they don't like it, hey, they watched it. And maybe they got something out of it. So... I don't know. What do you think, Josh? It's actually funny. I was, uh, cause I was looking at your page just, I was like, I should probably rewatch these shorts because it's been a long time and they're like four minutes each. <laughs> so it's like, you know, just do it at, like at work. Um, and I think your most watched thing is the, the fake Joker trailer, which is kind of expected because people love, you know, comic book stuff, but no, my, my most watched thing is clearly the empty space. I mean, the last one's trailer that has like, 50,000 views or something. Oh, well, I'm just looking at the fun stuff category. I yeah, the Joker trailer at. is actually like going pretty close to that, which is funny because like I really like the... Even the Suspiria trailer is at kind of a lot of views. I really like the Robocop trailer. I mean, the Predator trailer and the... Oh, the Deck Guard one, which is so funny, but I, I also don't forgot you've done like eight music videos for people. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's music videos on there. Those aren't on my page, but there's a bunch of music videos. I got to work with the great artist Zembia. You have them on your... Um, if you look at videos, you like have them in a list, but even yeah. if they're on other people's pages, yeah. So. Yeah, and I'll have my... Um, I'll have my interviews on there, too. But yeah, I have that one. I, I worked twice with Emily Davis and the Murder Police which is a great El Paso band. They, they're they doing some great jobs. And then, of course, I worked with Pablo Big Dreams Medina on two of the weirdest... <laughs> two of the weirdest <laughs> I, I've actually videos. seen those, so I'm, I'm curious. Because his ideas of music videos are hilarious. Um, <laughs> but, you know, they have a lot of fun. There's a lot of good music. And then we even, like... Yeah, I just think it's, it's cool to do music videos every once in a while. I've never done... Every time I've done a music, I think I've done one music video where it's a lot of beforehand planning with everyone else. They're just kind of like, what if we're at this ditch and we film, which I think is weird, but. I feel like, you know, when I watched a lot of um, pop-up video, I learned that a lot of music videos are just like the band shows up and then they wing it. So that's not even like yeah. outside the norm for like professionals in the industry. You know? yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I think it's fun. I think it's a fun time. I also did a short with Benny. Also, like, and this is just the last thing I'll say, is that also if you go to my TikTok, we're doing short films on there. I think it, the cool thing, again, like, use the mediums that we have. If you got to use your phone, use your phone. If you got to use TikTok, use TikTok. If you're trying to make stuff, like, make it. And don't look at, like, I know for a long time, me personally, I looked at, like, the fact that a short is a short, a TikTok has to be a minute long as deterrence. But I think if if you look at them as... As challenges, it's a lot easier to do. So hopefully this inspired some of you guys. Hopefully you're not too mad that there's not a real episode this week. And we'll see you next week with probably the Pitch Black or maybe Arena or maybe there's like three more the episodes I haven't edited together. And so I'll say, you know what I'll say, guys? Keep shining. Um, thanks for coming to... Keep shining. Yeah, there's that song that's like, keep shining. But if I sing any more than that, it's going to get copyright. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like you I'm say the dealing, first, I'm the not first dealing three with a, syllables of happy birthday. <laughs> I'm not dealing with a copyright claim on my own fucking video I'm doing while I go on vacation. Um, so, yeah, guys, check out those shorts. Tell me what you think in the comments. 
um, like and subscribe to this channel and to that other channel, the Andrew Hada one. Um, and yeah, we'll keep making them. We'll, we have a lot of fun stuff coming up too. So check it out and we'll see you guys next time on the bomb squad. Josh, anything last, any, any last words? Uh, not really. No. All right. Well, guys, see you later.